Beef Market Update on realagriculture.com with Ann Wasco is brought to you by Haney Farms. Do you need seed? Find us at haneyfarms.com. Sean Haney here with realagriculture.com. We're at the International Livestock Congress in Calgary, Alberta. And look, we get the chance to do a Beef Market Update with Ann Wasco. Welcome today, Ann. Great to be here. Okay, so there's a lot of talk about the economy today, feeding prices, all those, you know, the, our main factors we talk about every every two weeks. Let's talk about how fall is lining up. Um, we just heard Brent Reynolds from Louis Dreyfus gave us a bit of a bearish feed price outlook, which is good for cattle feeders, mm-hmm. um, not so good for the rest of our audience. Um, and we're, we're hearing that, you know, there are op- there is good opportunities for exports and demand globally. How do you think this all pieces together and shapes up for fall? Well, first of all, get back to the conference and the theme and what's going on here today. The, this is, these are great updates. We get to hear about interest rates. We get to hear about GDP growth, not just North America, globally, the emerging markets, all those kinds of things. So it's a good way for producers to start thinking about, okay, here's what the big picture is starting to look, back, look like. Then we hear some things about what's going on with this year's crop compared to this conference last year mm. when we were all talking about the drought yep. and what lies ahead. And of course, a con- considerably different story right now. And we've been getting that news in the marketplace as we've gone forward. But having said that, now we can start to look like, okay, if we've got lower feed prices, potentially, um, hopefully, some improvement on this margin side that's been just such a disaster for the industry on the feeding side in the last couple of years. So are there some things out there that are uh, going to change? And I think the message we're hearing today is, yeah, it looks like it. You, you can leave today thinking a little bit optimi- a little bit optimistically like the, you, we talked about getting caught in the rut of you know cattle feeding sucks and I got to go grain farming but today I, I'm leaving here with a little bit of a different uh, thought in my head yeah exactly and I think if, if nothing else Sean that has to be okay open your eyes to what else is going on right that has to be the big picture so I think that's important today we still don't know we still have to deal with mother nature and corn pollination and all those kinds of things but we do have a better uh, feel about things today than we did this time a year ago well and, and hopefully an environment where both feeders and ranchers can can make some money and, and right now it you know if we do see lower feed prices that's going to be good for for calf prices yeah and a critical comment right there especially doc, we heard dr morgan jones just talk, touch on that i mean profitability is the, the the base of all this so how else are we going to start to grow the cow herd from the 25 percent decrease we've seen since 05 uh, to kind of build the base for greater growth in exports greater growth in beef consumption all those kinds of things are, are piecemealed together so it's important and and that's a you know a key point is that I've heard numerous people in the hallways today say we need to see that cow herd start to increase. That's, yeah. that's key for the long-term viability of our industry. It is. It absolutely is. But that has to. It has to come from the profitability side. So, and Mother Nature plays into that. We've talked about that a lot. So, but today conditions look great. We saw the the, the moisture charts. We saw the talk about not just grain, but also hay crop, pasture conditions, all those kinds of things, looking much better. Okay, so now that we this is, we we got the rose-colored glasses on a little bit, we're 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 a little bit optimistic today. We got to slow it down. Um, what what is in your if you were to guess right now, what is the truck? Because we've got lower <laughs> feed prices. Potent, you know, it looks that way. Uh, demand looks fine. Um, the dollar has been sort of weak. Like what what yeah. what are we missing? Well, how do we know what the truck is, as you put it? Um, last year, we were chugging along, and uh, the truck, who knew it, was E. coli, right? Mm-hmm. Um, or one of the trucks, uh, yeah. along with the drought uh, from a Canadian perspective. Um, so we know, I mean, we're Canadian, so we've always got that other foot in. What's going to go wrong now, right? We've just had so much of that since 0203. O- yeah. But at the same time, I do think uh, we, you have to have on that list this whole cool. Um, issue and what lies ahead and what decisions are made by U.S. processors and retailers and therefore cattle feeders about what, what they're going to do um, with, with or without Canadian and Mexican inventory. So that one is out there. We know it. We don't know the outcome. That's the uncertainty piece mm-hmm. that we're playing with right now. And so you know, if you had to pick one truck, I guess that's, that's my concern right now is just how this thing plays out. I wish we knew more. And that'll be all reflected in the basis. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, if, as you look at the basis, you know, potential for, for this fall, 
what what's sort of on your horizon for fall and winter for basis? Like, how, like last year was um, a review for where we were last year mm-hmm. and or the last couple of years and where we could be. Is this going to be one of those normal years or the potential for it to be even wider? Well, we're, we're watching right now. And again, it depends how it plays out. Today, if you've got inventory and you're out there looking to do some risk management in, in terms of, say, forward contracting or whatever, the numbers appear to be fairly similar to a year ago from what we're getting offered from Canadian packers and U.S. packers at this point in time. So right now, you'd have to say maybe not a lot different. But again, that piece can change very, very quickly. So today, what I see, based on what we know today about cool and the timing, is things right now about similar. But we just know that at some point in time, that could change very, very quickly. Mm-hmm. So do, as we, you know, based on some of these optimistic outlooks that we're sort of hearing and sort of getting the feel for today, how much steam could we see at the auction mart as we start, uh, things start rolling? Well, again, I think cautiousness is important here. Um, the futures market, if you remember, is going to be what kind of plays back. And so if we're talking April live cattle futures, like 2014, up in that 130 area, you know, how much, how much do we then, can we attack, attach back to, to feeder cattle prices and calf prices this fall? And that will then be the mathematical equation about what's my cost to gain and mm-hmm. those, kinds of, those kinds of numbers. It should put prices above last year's levels if all of those things go forward. But I don't think I'd say, you know, wildly higher at the yeah. same time. But. Well, and you know, what we, it, it's not, uh, we've talked the last couple of years, higher prices don't mean higher profits. And, and, you know, even if we don't hit those max numbers, it's not going to be a huge concern if our costs are lower. Exactly. That's the critical piece, right? And that's the whole, so 130 this year versus 130 fat cattle last year. Those are the same numbers, but let's make some money at it this year. And both sides of the fence need it, and that's the key. Is that um, hearing a lot in the hallways today, people talking about we have it really needs to be a situation where the rancher and the feed yard, and you know, and you want to throw the background in there somewhere. It has to be one of those. We need one of those turns where it's everybody can make some money. I don't, I don't think there's a lot of concern out there about packers today, but you know, from a producer standpoint, that's what really what we need. So my only closing comment to that, Sean, would be. Do your math, be ready to react, know where that number is for you as an individual producer, and be ready to act on it. So at the same time, we can't just go wandering along. You have to be proactive on the risk management side to say, here's what I need, here's what I can get, it's there today, let's pull the, pull the trigger. Well, and when we have a situation where we do have some potential for some profitability in front of us, let's really, really not get all of a sudden greedy. If there is some money to ta- on the table, the opportunity to take it, Take it. Don't and wait for that. And, and Sean, though, there's strategies to allow you to do a little bit of both. Okay. True. So get out there, learn your lessons, and um, and figure those things out. Yeah. Okay, Ann, well, uh, great scene. We we'll get to do this in person. Exactly. It's fantastic. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, have a good summer. We'll talk you to you too. in a couple weeks. Sounds good.